In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Well, welcome everyone to our celebration of this fourth Sunday in Advent, a Sunday that always places the figure of Our Lady before us, the one who gives birth to the Word made flesh. And in Mary, we are given an example that we are called to follow that we too in our own way bring the word to birth in our own lives and in the lives of others. So let's now take up our prayers as we light the fourth candle of the wreath. The prayers are in the booklet. You can get accompanying this Mass uh, or in the parish bulletin. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our Saviour, the true light who has come into our world. We ask you to send your blessings on the community who gather around this wreath. Strengthen our hearts with the example of your love that we may receive you with joy and gladness on the day of redemption when you will come to reign as universal king forever and ever. Come wisdom of our God most high, guiding creation with power and love. Teach us to walk in the path of wisdom. Come flower of Jesse, sign of God's love for all people. Save us without delay. Come radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, sun of justice. Shine on those who walk in the valley of darkness. Come Emmanuel. God's presence among us. Save us, Lord our God. As we draw near to the end of this Advent season, may Almighty God let the light of the Word made flesh shine upon us. May God fill our hearts with joy at the coming of Jesus and lead us to life everlasting. pray for the grace of this Advent season. Pour forth, we ask you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. For he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Micah. The Lord says this, You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, the least of the clans of Judah, one of you will be born for me the one who is to rule over Israel. His origin goes back to the distant past, to the days of old. The Lord is therefore going to abandon them to the time when she who is to give birth gives birth. Then the remnant of his brothers and sisters will come back to the children of Israel. He will stand and feed his flock with the power of the Lord, with the majesty of the name of his God. They will live secure for from them he will extend his power to the ends of the land. He himself will be peace. The word of the Lord.
O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Shine forth from your cherubim throne. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. May your hand be on the one you have chosen, the one you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. This is what Christ said on coming into the world. You who wanted no sacrifice or oblation prepared a body for me. You took no pleasure in holocausts or sacrifices for sin. Then I said, just as I was commanded in the scroll of the book, God, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. Notice that he says first, you did not want what the law lays down as the things to be offered. That is the sacrifices, the oblations, the holocausts and the sacrifices for sin. And you took no pleasure in them. And then he says, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. He is abolishing the first thought to replace it with the second. And this will was for us to be made holy by the offering of his body made once and for all by Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women you are the most blessed. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's not in our gospel today, but there's a phrase which very much is a frequent part of our gospel message throughout this whole last week of Advent. And it's a phrase I think we should pay attention to and I'd like to reflect on this weekend. It's a phrase that some have tallied up and reckoned to occur 138 times in the Bible. It occurs no less than five times just in the few chapters dealing with the infancy and birth of Jesus. 
And the little phrase in question is, do not be afraid. And the fact that prophet after prophet, gospel writer after epistle writer, all use it, would seem to say that all these different people of faith from different times and places have all come to have the conviction that a relationship with God takes away fear. Takes away fear. Even though, sadly, so often religious people have been able to twist religion into being a cause of fear and God into being an object of fear. Do not be afraid. As the birth of God into flesh approaches, that cry rings out again and again to Mary at her annunciation in her uncertainty, to Joseph in his bewilderment, to Zechariah, father of John the Baptist, in his lack of faith, to the shepherds in their consternation. These are the Advent and Christmas days of Emmanuel, God with us, into the world of poverty and pain, and of conflict and betrayal, of suffering and death, of that poor little letter of the Greek alphabet, Omicron, into that world the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. Good news is born. Good news, God's spell, gospel. The good news which means we do not have to be afraid, which tells us that the most Godless seeming parts of life are filled with the presence of God. That God, God's embrace holds us even there. That when we feel most alone, we aren't. That's what next weekend's celebration of the birth of Jesus says to us. By contrast, the media makes its money never more so than at present, by cultivating fear, by an endless repetition of the number of cases, saying the same thing again and again, only to increase our fear. Understandably, a ripple of anxiety once again is passing across our city, across our nation and across our world. The fear is unavoidable. The difference lies in how a disciple receives and responds to that fear. The martyrs of the early church faced far worse than we do at present, and yet they were famous for singing as they walked into the amphitheatre where torture and death awaited them, rather than using their last moments to stock up on toilet paper. One of them, when asked why they persisted in gathering for the Eucharist in defiance of the law, declared, well, because without the Sunday Eucharist, we couldn't live. We couldn't live without it. <coughs> because here we find solidarity in being a Christian community. And here, as a community, we find God, ready to be our strength to be our food for the journey. As Jesus is conceived and born, that refrain rings out again and again, do not be afraid. But in fact, are we just as afraid as those who don't come to this Eucharistic explosion of God into the world? Or does faith in God allow us to see meaning in life even when life's fragility confronts us? Does faith in God allow us to see life's meaning not in its length, but in its final destiny? Does faith in God allow us, like our brothers and sisters, those martyrs of the early church, to walk into the valley of suffering and death singing? Do not be afraid, Mary, those words of the angel 
didn't take away from her the experience of seeing the people he loved turn on her son. Those words didn't take away from her the heartbreaking moment captured in Michelangelo's Pieta. But what they did take away from Mary was despair that life's purpose is frustrated when death comes unexpectedly and prematurely. What they did take away from her was fear of what can harm the body but not the soul. Do not be afraid. The cry rings out as the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. And we have to decide whether our faith will make a difference to how we travel through life more fearful or more fearless, more aware of God's absence or of God's presence. Our hope founded upon freedom from suffering and death in this life or founded upon the eternal destiny for which we were created by the God who first loved us into being. Do not be afraid. 138 times God says it to us in the scriptures. Advent and Christmas invite us to hear it and to allow it to shape who we are. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of the Lord, we ask for the peace of God's grace to come upon our world. For Pope Francis, Bishop Anthony and all who lead God's people, that they may help us as God's people to be alert to the signs of the times and to strive to discover what God wants for the church and the world. Lord, hear us. We pray in this time of Advent for our world as so many continue to suffer from the effects of the pandemic, we pray in a special way for members of our own community of faith who are sick. Lord, hear us. As the Christmas feast draws near, we pray that, just as Mary brought the word made flesh to birth, so too God's living word will take flesh in our hearts, and through our lives in the hearts of others. Lord, hear us. We pray for those whom the coming feast of Christmas may lie clouded in shadow, for those who lack the world's goods, for those who grieve, for those who do not know the safety of loving relationships. Lord, hear us. We pray for our fellow local Christian churches, as they too prepare for the coming feast of Christmas, that their celebrations of the Lord's birth may bring them a renewal in the cycleship and a joyful spirit of hope. May we all grow closer together as disciples of the Lord. Lord, hear us. God of all goodness, you are with your people at this time. Fill your world with peace and make us worthy to celebrate the birth of your word made flesh. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as the, as the Spirit filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. For all the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed him when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his birth, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We bless you, therefore, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sin, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, <clears throat> and now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we ask you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfil when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you, Holy Father, what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. We humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May the Spirit make your Church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, 
And may the Spirit keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony Randazzo, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our sisters and brothers and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For through him and with him and in him O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. And so as we continue our Advent journey together, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, through the prophet Isaiah you have told us they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into sickles. During this Advent season, we pray that we may replace our anger with forgiveness and our disputes with peace, so that we may build the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As always, we pray for all of you who are at home, that God's peace be with you. If you are with others, let's share now a sign of that peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him for whom we prepare a way in our hearts this Advent. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's birth, 
who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Well, I pray that this last week of Advent be a, a beautiful time for you and that it brings us that message from God. Do not be afraid uh, in challenging times. You know the, the presence of God with us in those challenges. Uh, our parish bulletin has lots of um, information and news and things for Christmas uh, coming up, so please uh, have a look at that. Uh, it's available on our parish website if you haven't... Uh, uh, received it by uh, by email and our parish website has details of our Christmas celebrations uh, which we um, look forward to very much. The Lord be with you and may almighty God bless you the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit as we prepare our hearts to celebrate the Lord's birth go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. I forgot to mention one thing, uh, being um, at home, of course, watching this. Uh, this is the time of the year when we have the Christmas offering envelopes in the, the uh, church, which are a vital supplement to the uh, first collection, which supports the priests of the diocese and the retired and ill ones in particular as well. Um, the, the parish bulletin and website has details of how online contributions can be made. Thank you.